Hello, today we're here to talk about the casting and audition process and I've got Nick Buckland here. Nick is a talent agent, but he's also a professional actor and a producer. Nick, I'm gonna ask you some questions. Mm -hmm. Let's begin with, what is the importance of the casting process? Well, you're coming to me uh, as a producer with a vision of, of a story. In order to get that story across, Firstly, you need to know that you've got people who fit the vision, who are relevant and pertinent to your story. Mm -hmm. But you also need to know that you've got people who are capable of delivering, who are professional, who are going to turn up, who are going to, that you're going to be able to connect with, that you're going to be able to work with. Um, and, and I can't think of any other way of you knowing all of that without actually working with them in an audition room. Mm. So the process is essential. Where does the process begin and what are the steps in the process? Well, from experience, it's, it was you and me sitting down, looking at the story you were telling, looking at the sort of characters, where you were coming from, and a case of me giving you guidance on the people that I represent and who I think are the people that would be able to do that for you. So that was the first step for us. Next step is, okay, let's make a selection. The selection for you, um, I feel, was far less based on visuals mm -hmm. and it was far less complicated because in your casting, they are all individuals and there's not the family connections, there's not a, um, you're not being led by ethnicity, you're not being led by age particularly, you had some but not tremendously so so it was a very open casting which was great mm. um, but of course for some people um, a story will be based on a particular ethnicity uh, with a family structure so you may have and it may be a story about a particular issue so you may have a lot more uh, factors that come in relating to ethnicity gender um, uh, age uh, and so on because those factors are pertinent to the story. Mm -hmm. But the beauty of your story was that actually that doesn't have a tremendous impact. Mm. So that left us very open to look at a whole range of people, which is why it was essential for you to get them in the room and see what they were like. Absolutely. And I think to just touch on that point you're making there is, I was very keen to have a very diverse mm. cast on screen yeah. and to have diversity represented on screen where sometimes it's not. And that's, you know, we had that conversation early on, mm. which was great. Um, let's move on to the next question. This is kind of a, uh, a question for you, broadly speaking, the audition. Mm. What actually happens at the audition or what things do people, what have you observe, observed that people do at an audition process? What um, there are so many things that do happen <laughs> in terms of the fact that some people will merely want to to get to know the actors and mm. to have a conversation to to see what the what the relationship feels like mm -hmm. and so that's that's director producer possibly casting director or agent um, sitting with an actor and just feeling the chemistry of the of the, the working relationship and that's definitely got to be a part of it because you've got to feel that you can work with people and that they um they're people that are going to be receptive to to your direction um so there's a little bit of interaction there's most importantly though it's about whether or not this actor is going to bring something to your production and give you um give you more scope to, to, to develop the characters, to make the character three-dimensional. Uh, when you come in to the room, in your head, you've got a whole raft of characters and they're all three-dimensional up here, but for everybody else, they're two-dimensional. It's black and white on a piece mm. of paper. Yep. So you want to know whether this actor has been able to pull the character off the page and bring in that three-dimensional living, breathing person. So you work with the script, clearly. Um, the script is really just a vehicle to allow the actor to show you the character that you, or the character that they've perceived from the script. Mm -hmm. But the next step of the audition is for you to actually direct and see whether or not they can change it at will.
Yeah, and that's so important. Yeah. Um, and you've covered a lot there. It's, you know, for me, it's about getting to know the person, mm-hmm. to seeing them face to face and yeah. starting to develop that relationship or that rapport, um, seeing what they've got to offer and then seeing how we would work together yeah. in that actor-director relationship because ultimately we are going to end up on a film set together and we've got to yeah. execute the script and we've got to you know bring that to life. And, and all of that getting to know them, all of that work sounds like you know okay so let's have two or three hours working with the guy and mm. and in fact the reality of it is that most casting processes afford you about 10 to 15 minutes to do that mm. because you've got you're not just going to audition 12 people for 12 roles mm. you're going to audition maybe 10 people per role yeah you know and if you're going to see that many people and, and i've got to say that Typically, for a role, I would expect a director to see as many as 20 people for a role. Mm. So a dozen roles, 20 people, 240 people, how many months are you going to spend doing the auditioning? Mm. You're not. It's going to be days. So they've got an actor has 10 to 15 minutes to make an impression. Mm. Um, and it's got to be the right impression. All of those things that we've just talked about, somehow they've got to be explored in that little window of opportunity. And when they leave the room... You and your colleagues, your co- your, your co-directors, producers, all the casting directors, mm. anybody who's involved in that decision process, is going to have a feeling. Yeah, I think they're a probability. Yep. But of course, there's going to be another stage where you meet them again, and where you possibly bring them with other characters to look at the chemistry mm-hmm. uh, between characters mm. and whether whether or not that's real as well. Yeah, and one of the things that I was was fortunate it wasn't really planned at the beginning but it was really fortunate it unfolded with mine was that um a number of my characters come together later on in the film so i thought well why not have them come together in the yeah. audition process yeah um rather than seeing them individually and that way i got to spend an hour an hour and a bit with a group of four yes. or five and that was hugely beneficial like because then they could bounce off each other. We could actually do a scene. Yeah. We did some, you know, other things, yeah. but then we actually did a scene and we did some improv. Um, yeah, and I think well, you, that's that's that was great. I loved I loved the way you were auditioning because I think it was fabulous. You could bring people in, people could leave, and other people could arrive, and you could play with those different relationships. And and it did mean that yes, you had more time with individuals, but they were as part of a group because you were effectively combining five or six auditions into a single. A single gathering mm. um, and it was a lovely part of the process and I guess in a way coming back to your initial question what what happens what happens is what works best for the director and our job is to facilitate that yep. our job is to get the actors to you mm. um, and to make sure that they're prepared um, in order that you can conduct the process as the director that you want um, and I, I mean, one of the pitfalls for for emerging um, directors is that there may be a a tendency to snatch at people because they're available Mm -hmm. and to say, oh, yeah, well, um, so-and-so is going to do it or my friends are available or I can get them to do it. No, it's about the character that you're, you're trying to craft. You need to find... You know the right clay, the right mixture, if you like, mm. in terms of the, the the actor's ability. You need to find the person that can actually mould the character that you're trying to put into the story. Because we had a little conversation mm. a few moments ago where you were talking about some of the other steps in the process that you have, the more mm. logistical mm-hmm. um, factors, mm-hmm. the equipment factors, the crew mm-hmm. factors, all of these things that are part of the production. And you need to know very early on that yep my cast is sorted absolutely because i'm not going to be able to come back to that mm. and and that's been a huge weight off my shoulders yeah. in working with you working with your team that the, the process was you know pretty streamlined that we are able to see a number of people and then lock them in mm. really quickly and so i was like as you said it's that's done that's a weight off my shoulders. It's it's there. I know that's solid, and then I can work out uh, work on all the other you know issues that are you know coming but up. The beauty is that whilst you're saying that's done, mm. you're also comfortable to know that you can call these people together for rehearsal, mm. which is you know which I'm I'm sure we'll talk about. Um, so you know that you've got that factor, mm. but you also know that 
they probably know each other. Mm. And and as I said to you earlier, I was talking to one of the actors mm. and she was talking about how, what she was seeing and, and, and how she thought she might, mm. where she might go with this character. And obviously I know all of the actors. Um, and they're, they're talking about it. They're excited about mm. it. They're building it. And they're all, now they're working on it. And to finish off this video, mm. um, do you have any final kind of advice for first-time directors going into the casting and audition process? One small, you know, thing that you'd say to them. Can I do two? Mm -hmm. uh, one of them is just to re recap what I said a moment ago about don't snatch at people, but mm -hmm. actually take that, put that extra little step in the process and make sure that you explore what options are genuinely available. So, yep. so do audition. Mm -hmm. And the other thing is don't, be afraid to direct in an audition. A lot of us is, you know, putting the other hat on now, my acting hat to say, okay, if I rock up for an audition, yeah, of course, I will have made some decisions about a character mm -hmm. and I will have defined a character in my head and, and worked out what I thought was going on. But I don't know what's in your head as director. Mm -hmm. um, and what I bring along may not be exactly what you had in mind. So don't be afraid to say to me, okay, that's interesting. Well, hopefully you do it like this and not just say that's rubbish, get out. <laughs> um, but that's interesting. Could we try it where you'd, where the character actually has a different motivation? What about this? Yep. If that was the motivation, how would that work for the character? Ah, okay. Because you want to know, firstly, whether I can take direction, mm -hmm. but you also want to know whether I can deliver it. <laughs> And even if what I came along with first time is exactly what you want, still do that because you still need to know those two things, yep. whether I can take direction and whether I can deliver it mm -hmm. uh, as an actor. Um, so as a director, as a first time director, don't be afraid to direct, but never show an actor how to do it. Yep. Great. Give them the background. Excellent, Nick. This has been a great chat. Uh, yeah, it's been great, great working together. Um, and yeah. thank you for coming on the video no, today. I've enjoyed working with you for years now. <laughs>